Good evening, parents. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I bet you're doing well. Um, Mr. Christians, I'm going to give indication when you need to put on the three hour slide, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Not happening today. So, um, I think I'm really in a fortunate position to be speaking to you tonight. Um, as Mr. Dennis indicated, that we are starting something new at, at Red Pubs, um, this in particular. Um, so, the the focus for social responsibility, there are four areas, uh, or focus areas per se, it's curriculum, capacity building, sports and arts. Um, and this year we are we're finding, we're finding a way to integrate social responsibility within everything that we do at Red Pubs. And I think if you look at what we as a school are, are trying to do based on our vision, it is to definitely uh, create the, or untap the potential of every single individual at the school but we try to extend that. We want to engage other communities, other schools, other learners from different backgrounds and create and provide an opportunity so that they can thrive in the same kind of spirit, in the same way. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So the, the, the philosophy or the model that you're trying to create or what we are creating or implementing this year is utilizing the, our vision and mission with our transformation charter and finding a way to see how that um, can, can be feasible for with pups to, to kind of roll a pathway for development. Awakening the potential of our boys, our staff, the wider with pups community, but also um, uh, uh, providing a space and, 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 and making connection with, with, with other communities and other schools. And, and so far, um, I think we've, we've been very active during term one, and I'm sure you can remember that we've done the blessing bags, we've done a number of, 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 of things as well. We've, we've, we've ventured into, into Manenburg, uh, Saunders in Prime, we opened our arms, and we've realized we, we've given books, and we've, we are establishing a library in, the, in that particular school to provide opportunities for that community and for the learners to have a safe space. Now, this project that we are doing with regard to sport is exactly the same. How is it the same? Our boys, our hockey and our rugby boys, we will be, we will be playing for a greater cause, a greater sense of establishing a, a great, great R and grade one play area for Primrose Park Primary, which is a different school again. And in this way, um, the boys, the learners or the girls from Primrose Park Primary will be able to get an opportunity um, through the efforts of our boys in our community to of course get something that they are not experiencing at the moment. Um, uh, what they currently have, in actual fact, they don't even have a particular, I would have loved to show photos, uh, but it, it will just take a bit too long. What we are going to do, we will, we will have visuals, we will send out the video, we will provide the links and the necessary uh, links to websites and of course the campaign that we are, we are partnering with Sport for Better Lives which is the, the end goal that we, we, we've, we've, we've engaged so they can provide the platform for us to, to, to of course, assist us in this, in this um, endeavor. So, in essence, what we are talking about is our under nine boys, your boys, um, we, we are parting through the rugby program, through the hockey program, to give them the opportunity to, to play for a year course. The, the campaign revolves about uh, that every, every try that we score or every goal that we score, um, we they would like the parents and the broader community to pledge 20 and for a particular try. And it will amount to about, the focus is a 31, well, our goal, 31 and a half thousand rand, um, to, to generate that money, of course, to, to, to erect or establish a, a play area for Plymouth Park Primary. And, Just um, based on goals, sorry. Skip. Just based on goals. Goals and tries. Yeah. Wow, we've got a lot of uh, school. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the more people we get, we only need one. <laughs> so, so if, if you look at this, we have one goal, we've got five tries. People can pledge as many as much as they would like. It, and that's why we only have a 20, we call it 20 rand. Um, and make it, we want to make it accessible. We also want to extend it to that community, so if any people in that space do support this initiative, wanting to kind of connect with their old uh, former primary school, it's an opportunity and affordable for them as well. So we're making it accessible. So, so we want to see that um, children in that space get the opportunity to enjoy 
um, the foundations of, 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 of play um, in developing these motor skills so that they can, of course, reach their goals. Um, my brother, uh, Suleiman Atzimba, he, was, uh, he, he got a scholarship from, from Red Pubs. He went on to, to play for Bishop's first team. He's come to play in UCT. He's contracted at, uh, at, 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 at Western Province and he's one of the, the very uh, high performing um, centers in the country that might, that, that's actually part of, of, of the EPD of, of the, the South African uh, um, development program. So there's a lot of things happening and he was one of the boys who came from my school as well. So, and I taught at the school as well and I've seen the potential that the school has and they need that nudge in the direction where they can improve the, the, the infrastructure facility in such a way that enhance teaching and learning by providing the opportunity for those boys to kind of uh, identify with their role models on national television and say that I want to be like that boy. Because as you know that what happened occurred last week and I'm sure you've seen the, the reports about a, uh, a, the secretary of the school being shot um, and, 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 and I can assure you it didn't take place on the premises a few hundreds of meters away um, but it, it's, it just indicates that in certain spaces there are crimes for help and we're looking at children who, who will suffer at the end of the day. Um, so the, that's a developing story because I know there was quite a bit of concern and we've listened because as much as we wanted that to take place, um, we didn't pursue that we're not going tomorrow. Why? I think we've got to be reasonable. We need to allow the school to, to kind of embrace the, the opportunity to respect and to just provide the support and the counseling to the children and also to the teachers. And also, because we don't know all the merits of the situation and we've got to be cautious about how we go about things. So I think if you're looking at this, we, we, we definitely want to in, reach out, we want to make connections. In, in, the, in the way of making connections, we would be able to, um, to gain perspective based on what other people are going through. We'd be able to mold connections in the sense that we, we, we value and recipro reciprocate. Uh, there's an opportunity for learning to take place on both sides. And of course, once we've made, made connections over a period of time, we then hope to see shared growth. And I think that's essentially what I think our vision and mission is stating. That we want to awake potential for any person within our school community, but also in the broader uh, 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 South African context as well. So in terms of that, um, we've, got a part, we've got a partner called SA Unite, which is a, an NPO working at the school, and they've done a number of projects. Uh, they'll be assisting us in terms of doing activities at the school, but also um, sourcing the necessary infrastructure, maybe perhaps from certain places, so that we can get this off the, off the ground. Um, I think, I think we, 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 we are definitely um, uh, creating an opportunity for the boys, for our boys, and for the broader community to have a platform to, to venture into, well, I would say beyond the comfort zone, um, but, but we've got to be mindful of how we do that. And I want to assure all the parents that we are very much of the safety and the well-being of your boys every step of the way. Um, we will never compromise any uh, 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 situation or we'll, we'll never compromise the, the safety um, of your boys because we need to make things work but be very mindful of, of how we do that. Um, if you do have any questions, um, please, um, you, you may ask, you can send me an email if you don't have, if you don't have anything now, but you can email me and we'll be able to engage. Um, and of course, Mr. Damons is very passionate about sport and uh, sport and Smith as well. I think we take sport very seriously. As you can see, we've done quite a bit of things um, in term one, or we've achieved quite a few things in term one, and we, we hope that this would be one of the ways in which we would be able to get the boys to play for greater courses so that they can improve on field and off field, developing more holistically as a sports person should. I think that's sort of what we're looking to achieve with this specific initiative. And as you will notice in the newsletters, you'll be able to support other ventures as well. Uh, but I want you as a parent to drive the message home to get this as much parents on board so that we can actually uh, make this a reality for our boys but also for the community of Manavok. So that's all my thoughts. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Three hours later. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> right. So guys, so that, that obviously ties in with our lifelong learning uh, 
strategy for sport there as well, where we, we want to engage with the boys and, 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 and leaving them with, you know, sport teaches you more than just what happens on the field. It humbles you off the field, it gives you life lessons and all those kind of things. A lot of Oaks, if you look at follow some of our great stories, Makas Willem Apimpi's story on, 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 on um, DSTV at the moment, Sia Pelisi's story, if you follow the Lions documentary that's coming out soon, you see that there's a lot of passion and, and giving back off the field that takes place. And I, and I want our boys to maybe understand that and, and be involved in that environment and learn that there's a greater cause from sports. So we're trying to tie the two together. And yeah, um, 31,000 might seem like a lot, but if I have, how many, 48 boys, I think. So I have every parent donating, and I score five tries a week, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we could be halfway, halfway to our target by the third or fourth game. Um, and Mr. Wardlesmith has guaranteed a few goals in the hockey department as well. <laughs> we'll let someone in risky, we'll tell other school, let's see if we are playing for a course, can you get a score? <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, like I said, tonight's very informal, I do a little presentation. So just to touch base to you guys, tell you guys what I am about, especially in terms of my coaching, uh, what I strongly believe in and, and, and how I want to help your boys and encourage your boys to be the best players that they can be. Um, if you guys were out here on the field today, we, I mean, I've worked on simple things. So if you ask your boy at tonight, what is 9 and 3, he must show you what's 9 and 3. Because I told him, you don't ever hold the rugby ball other than 9 and 3. And that's 9 and 3 on the clock. Because you can pass left and right that way. So that's something that I hopefully learn. Because they're spinning around like tops over here, trying to pass and doing Paul Adams spin passes, <laughs> trying to spin the ball. 9 and 3, pass without spinning the ball. It's a great tool to use. Uh, some of my uh, people that I looked up to in my days could pass the ball without having to spin it 50 meters. Dan van Sale was one of the scrums that I looked up to could pass the ball, reverse pass. Danny Gerber didn't believe in spinning the ball and passing. He could pass a bullet pass at least 10 to 20 meters running with just through the hands. So those are the things that I'm trying to work with the boys. Getting the skill. They were so excited about handoffs and side steps and bumps. And I was like, guys, if you don't have the ball, how are you going to do that? So we need to get the ball through the hands first before we can get to that step. I mean, I'll hopefully teach him that one day. Get Sia Khaleesi here to come and teach him how to do some bumps and stuff. <laughs> and anyway, so uh, just to give you guys a bit of background again, uh, not too long ago, I had a little presentation and I spoke about what our sport vision uh, for the year was. I'll just recap that and then I'll give you guys a bit of my rugby vision, which is what the whole rugby department is working on. I've added a few things which I want to look at and then I'm going to take you a bit through the blueprint uh, of our rugby and then Mr. Gordon Smith will start, uh, go into the hockey. So just firstly again our vision, if you guys can see it up there, it says our aim through sport at primary school levels to encourage our boys to engage in lifelong learning sporting activities that are important for their ongoing health and well-being. We aim to empower every boy with the necessary sports skills to develop as an athlete and we want to encourage participation, growth and progression and aim to equip with the tools to achieve their desired level of competition. Uh, so just a, a, a few key things there is, we want to empower every boy with his skills. So I generally work with, in my group, and I'm sure the Aki does exactly the same, I do rotate around. So there's not an exclusive Mr. Damon's team. I work with all the boys and I give them the same skills. I've had my coaches here today for about 15 to 20 minutes where I gave them a workshop on what we're going to do. And I'll show you my weekly plan and how I plan out things and what my coaches are going to be doing and focusing on uh, in the term ahead. So every coach that I have here, um, I don't have all of them here, but Mr. Obermeyer is with us here tonight. He coaches under nine with me. And then we've got three youngsters that are uh, current false play players. So they're not very good because uh, I don't believe false play is good at all. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, thank you for that. I played for villages at the moment. We couldn't feel the team. So uh, I've got three youngsters that, that are false play rugby players that are helping us out. And they are, are, are enthusiastic rugby players, they know the game well, but they're also learning at the same time. They're learning to work with nine-year-olds. It's different giving a 14-year-old instruction or a 13-year-old instruction, giving a nine-year-old instruction. So I'm very hands-on with them. We give a little drill, it's, I'm in the drill with the guys, I show them what to do, I step out and go to the next station, I work with the next team. So that skills progression is going to be there for all the boys, and I want to make sure that everybody has that opportunities and I'll show you how my team setups will work in a bit. And just to get a feel of what it's like to play in a particular team or in a particular position. Right, the next slide looks at what our rugby vision is. 
So this was shape I must use, and I added one or two things which our rugby department looks at. Our rugby division, uh, the vision is to develop a style of rugby which will forever hold web pups in good stead once they move into high school. So just an interesting fact, many of our boys are now currently going to bishops, Mr. Weaver, am I right? Most of our boys are independent bishops. Uh, I think six of our boys uh, in the bishops first side this year, of ex web pups boys, in the under 14, 18, I think we have five boys also in a, I might be mistaken, but I saw Matthew there, I saw Finn there, uh, I saw McLagan there, uh, who else did I see in that picture? Uh, some of them had sh shaven heads, so uh, they didn't re I didn't recognize them. But I think we have five boys in under 14, 18 uh, at Bishop's as, as, as well this year, which is a compliment to our program. That our boys are being recognized once they leave here and they get the opportunity to play in a, in a particular age group, 18 age group at a, a well established school. And they could potentially represent one of the biggest schools in South Africa in, in rugby first team level in the, in the future. Um, we have our own unique perspective on the skills based game. And you notice this from the way we just throw the ball around. Sometimes it looks clueless or it looks like, you know, we should be playing truck and trailer, blue balls, rugby, or whatever. But we have our own skills based game, which we believe in. Uh, if we have the right coaching, can get the boys to achieve that desired result at the day off. Learning to pass the ball, all 15 players touching the ball, scoring such glorious tries, which we uh, saw this weekend, unfortunately, with the Rondebosch Sacks game. I think Rondebosch ran away with that. And um, so, if you saw the interplay, if you guys were watching that on the Super Sports Sport Schools thing, it was amazing rugby to watch. Um, our philosophy is that no player is limited by the number on their back. So, number one, yes, he's a prop, but he should be able to pass, run, offload, do all the other things that any other player can do in the team. Uh, and we encourage as many players as possible to handle the ball in a competitive situation in order for them to grow in confidence. So that competitive situation is I like to coach with a lot of scenarios on the field where it's not static, a lot of movement. Boys need to learn that it's a three on three, how do I handle this? It's two on three, how do I handle this? And I mean, I was, I was giving a bit of instruction to the boys today and I see many of them, like I said, spinning around like tops, catching the ball and turning before they pass. So those are things that I want to start coaching at a young age that when they get to under 13 and 12 level it becomes natural that I don't need to turn anyone, I can just catch and pass and play the next player position. Uh, something that I added over there is as coaches we need to ensure that the players develop their skills. So the skill set which promotes a skills based game and develops their creative mindset and confidence in their abilities. So we need to give them the tools that when they leave our session they're like, you know what, I've learned something, I can use it. I can still be creative, I don't want to be limited in a box, you know, coach said, a 10 must do this, I must only do that, or uh, we'll talk a bit about it at another time, but daddy the call, you know, mommy shots the team and they always say you must do this, so I must do this because that's what I'm going to do on the field. I don't want to limit that box, I want it to be creative as possible, think, how do I beat this team, how do I pass the ball around and how do I get to score tries, that's, that's what our ultimate goal is going to be. Um, just looking at our model, in terms of our long term model and where we're at. So obviously you guys, I've shared this with you guys before, if you guys were at our presentation that I'm working on this long term athletic de uh, development model, where I want to see our boys progress through the stages of sport. So uh, a 9 year old, I coach different to a 12 year old. And in a 9 year old, we still in a very much fundamentals element, where the fun needs to be there, but they need to learn certain skills, because next year they start actually playing their, their uh, full on competitive 15 aside rugby. Right? So I want to prep them for, for that. So we're basically just at the end of fundamentals and then going into the learn to train phase. Uh, we, we sort of hovering into that phase at the moment. And a lot of our, our, our like I said, of my coaching is it's, it's, it's instructional with, with demonstrations and, and I'm getting involved. But at the same time, I hope that the boys do have fun on the field, they leave with smiles. And they can come home and say that they've learned something from us from our session today. So that's where we're at currently with our training. Just to the other one. Just to look at what our session looks like. So you guys can see this. So so basically I, I have a template that I share with my coaches each week, uh, which has it's our rugby, uh, the rugby training planning. It's worked out into how long our session is, if it's 90 minutes or if it's 60 minutes. I have a station work which I run for 10 to 15 minutes.
which will be the same station work for the next two to three weeks. The idea is rep repetition, the boys need to learn. After that, they can do the skill, become second nature. <laughs> so the things that we did today was working on the tackle zone, and I've established two zones for them. So you can ask them at home, those who have word rugby, what is zone one, what is zone two, they must tell you. Please test them. Go and ask them what you know. Coach said zone one, zone two, test them. Zone one's a low tackle, zone two is around the hips. They must know those things. We also did a bleed test today, so many of you know that know the bleed test. Every uh, couple of seconds, they've got to run a 20 meter shuttle, they've got to wait for the whistle, run back again. Uh, I, I made it about 15 meters, I believe it's normally 20, and I gave them a target of getting to level 6. So if you get to level 6, you ran about a kilometer, which they don't know, they just ran a kilometer, but they were going at a, at a good pace, and they ran a kilometer, and I think only about 4 or 5 boys dropped out before level 6, which is great. So I said next week our target is level 8, so I'm giving them targets each week. So we're running the bleed test, and then we're looking at passing. So our passing drills is left and right passing with moving targets, and it's all about sh shoulder rotation, alignment on the pass, where you catch, where your hands end up. Very basic drills. Not once you have any game plan or any uh, structure there or anything. It's the very basic fundamentals of rugby which I've looked at today, and we'll carry on for the next two or three weeks until we get some shape going. Also giving them a few calls which we're going to learn throughout the season. These are calls that we're going to use throughout our web pups uh, schooling days. So use it under 9, under 10, under 11, under 12, under 13. Um, and the boys know that. So those are all station work. At the, in the middle of the day, I have something called work-ons. And generally after a session I go back and I see what did we do that we can do better. And I call that work-ons. I come back to the next session, I tell my coaches, guys, we need to look at this, this and this. Robin, you take that. Mr. Obermeyer, you take that. You work on that for me and you make sure that the boys are uh, understanding these fundamentals that we need to train at. So that's how our basic template looks uh, of my training session. Is there any questions on my training sessions at the moment? You guys are all happy. You will you allow me to be the Springbok coach. Great. Um, not a question, but just a comment. I mean, it was the first attack. Yeah. Oh, awesome. The approach you're using is definitely working with a lot of physical kit. Yeah. And you said it was amazing, so thank no, you. No, no, thanks a lot. So that's, that's, that's something that I want to achieve when the boys leave. I want them to feel, you know what, I'm part of a, I'm part of a bigger course. And, uh, and they feel that, you know what, I've learned something. And <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know, I'd like to take off my boots, put on my boots next time and run with them a bit of bleed test. I'd probably die halfway through. <laughs> but uh, I'll definitely get stuck in it. And I would encourage you guys on a Friday afternoon. Mom's dad, if you want to come and join us for voluntary touch, come and try and step me. You are welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely got to try. <laughs> or you see the other side. <laughs> I don't want you to play against me though, eh? No, no, no. Okay, nobody to play against me. Just tell me to single me out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys are welcome to come and join us on a Friday afternoon when we do have that. So that's how my session looks. Um, we'll pick up the intensity as the season goes on. And we will get into some kind of team alignment and I'll explain a bit more about our teams uh, how we're going to go forward so yeah, next slide so our rugby blueprint there's a few things that we're looking at over there just to give you guys an idea of what, we, what we're focusing on we want positive handling and we want interplay that means passing the ball backwards left and right <coughs> they're able to switch with another player I want commitment on defense so that means making your tackle when you when you say you're gonna make or when you have a man in front of you. I want to look at those things, and I want to develop self-confidence and creative mindset in the boys. So those are three things that I'm looking at doing. That's my goals for uh, our transition and for our outcomes. We also want to identify positions nine and ten because we believe in the senior phase. If we have identified it early enough, we can build a team around those two key positions. I think another position that's key is probably hooker as well because we're struggling, especially under 13, in getting a hooker that can throw in. So those are the skill sets that I'm going to be working on and trying to develop at a very young age. The, we're looking at no quick taps. So this under 9 play, we'll always have the other team back. There will be a scrum. There's going to be a rotational captaincy. I want everybody to feel that they've been part of a team and they have a chance to lead. So we will rotate captains. No, there's not going to be one captain for the season. I'm also looking at player rotation, and I know this was a big issue, especially with the cricket, but what I've decided to establish is that after two weeks, if there's somebody performing, I want to move teams around, I want to establish a few core player, uh, 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 
uh, personnel in certain key areas of, uh, that I need on the field in my sorry A, B, C and D teams and then I want to move other players around so that they feel that they've had a chance to perform in a, in a different team and had uh, an opportunity to be looked at. So those are things that I'm looking at. Uh, we also want to establish primary lingo which I showed you up on the board over there and these are web, uh, lingo that they'll use throughout the web pass playing days and then I want to develop basic positional play and there again players will take. So I, if I'm going to have a battery of tests which I'll be doing next week, if I've established who's the forwards, who's the backs, you're going to move. You might be a prop this week, next week you're the lock. I mean, I, had, I was laughed at in one practice session where I had the smallest guy playing lock, but just because this guy could jump so high, I was like, let me play your lock. So you are going to rotate until term three where we say, cool, we are settled, we know what we have, let's work on it, and then we knuckle down and prepare them for under 10. And under 10 coach might differ from me next year. You might feel that, you know what, this guy's not a nine, he's actually a 12. It's happened. The, there are many great players that currently play that didn't start out in their positions that they were at primary school level or even at high school level. Uh, one of them, Brian O'Banner, played scrum off up till grade 12 at case. So there's opposition, there's opportunity for you to grow after you leave the game of rugby as well. Uh, so just back to the other thing. This is looking at a little Excel sheet of how I establish. Here we go. So once I've established my uh, 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 group of players, I have this depth chart which I want to start using for all our sports codes, where I rank uh, or rate a player based on certain attributes. Does he pass? Can he tackle? What's his positional play like? Is he a forward? Is he a back? Uh, what's his athletic play like? And I think there's one more. No, there's not one more. And I rate him in colors. So the color green means he's good to go, he, he understands that, that element of the game. Yellow means there's some work to be done, but he has a basic knowledge. Red means I need to work on him. So I want to take all my boys that I have this year, and I need more boys' parents, so please go and speak to the others because I only had 28 at practice today. I want to take all the boys, put them on this chart, evaluate them throughout the season, and then give this little graph to my coach next and say, here you go. These are the boys, this is what I've worked at, this is where they started, this is where they ended. So that the coach next year has an idea of what is his depth like? Who, who can he call on for, for uh, to play in certain positions and in certain teams? So that's something that I'm going to be using uh, with my rugby for this season. Then just getting back to our philosophy again. I'm almost done Mr. Borders, if you don't mind. I've got two more slides I think. Just again on our philosophy. So the very next slide is very important to me. And it's something that I want to instill with, it's wherever I go, something that I want to instill with, with boys and uh, uh, that I coach, that they remember these things, and that is for my R's group. The three D's and the three R's. So the three D's to success, discipline, determination, and dedication. The boys know that, you know, you need to show a bit of discipline if you want to be part of my team. I made them run today if they're not disciplined. I've had only five suicides still, so there's something I'm going to have to do tick off when I get back from the tour the next week that they need to do their five suicides but I wanted to be disciplined on the field because they need to learn that in this space you, you still need to you still need to have a certain level of respect and understanding for the rules of the game and you know as much as we're having fun we need to learn something out of it and, and that discipline plays a key role in that I wanted to have determination, the grit, the fight in them to get over the line keep fighting even when the chips are down you know what we're not giving up we're going to be working hard and I want to be dedicated. I want to have boys at every single practice. You're going away wherever. Ooh, you guys can go and leave them here. Let them come and practice. I'll see them on the next flight. <laughs> but please, I want them to dedicate to those, those, especially on a Saturday. This is this hard thing for me to rock up at a field on a Saturday. And I've planned for four teams. And I suddenly can only field three. And I've got a full, the fourth team with some other boys because some boys just didn't pitch or didn't let me know at all they can't pitch. So that dedication is from the boys side and from the parents side, we can work on that as well. The three R's is something I've knew that I've added. The three R's is, is, is three R's, well, I'm an R, so I've stored up, let me find something that relates to me. So it's respect, respect for yourself, respect for your teammates, respect for your coach, and respect for the game. The biggest thing that, that, that this game has taught me is to be humble, respect, because at any point in life I can, you know, give it a to react to any situation on the field, off the field. Which is why I'm very strict with them. When I blow the whistle, whistle one means listen, look or look up. Whistle two means listen. Listen three means you're going to start running. 
So there are three chances for them to hey, coach Blue. Let's react. Okay, let's get together, let's listen, and let's go and play. Because on the field, you're going to suddenly get the ball, you need to react. Or the ref's going to make a call, and you need to react. So I want them to be able to react and, and, and work on that. Um, and then the last thing that we have is just a little conclusion that I do for myself is that firstly my vision for what I want to achieve in the nines won't work without the support of the parents. So I want you guys to back me, buy into what I'm trying to do, correct me where I'm wrong, give me advice, uh, but support me I think, that's the main thing. Second thing is, your expectations won't be met or won't be achieved without backing the system. So if you've got a certain philosophy, you know your son is really talented, he, he wants to express that talent, I feel that in my coaching spec, uh, uh, environment, your expectations won't be achieved if you don't back what I'm trying to achieve over there. So give me some, you know, word of advice. I, I'm human. I don't believe I'm the best coach out there. Uh, there are great people that I, I, I suspect and listen to, and I would say, cool, you know what? That's actually something I can implement. And I would, you know, make due process of trying to implement it. Um, and then the third part is, through that, parents and coaches, therefore, need to work together to raise strong young people, which is what I'm trying to achieve. And then ultimately, athletes will rise to the level of positive team standards. So, by that, if the environment is not positive, if I'm not energetic, if, the, uh, if there's negativity from the parent side or negativity from the coach's side, or there's a confusing um, uh, uh, language being spoken that the boys don't understand, you know, this one is saying this, this one is saying that, there's no synergy, then we're not going to be able to rise the way I see our, our sport performing and progressing. So, uh, we want to keep the positivity. I want you guys to be encouraging and, 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 and uh, you know, supporting your voice. And, um, yeah, just support me and support the rest of my coaching staff, Mr. Oman and all of them. Um, next week, Tuesday, if you guys are available, there's a very nice presentation talk that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm doing, which we sent out already. It's the, the coach parent role. And, I mean, we've got a nice panel put together. Uh, we also had somebody speak yesterday to our hockey coaches who, I mean, without even meeting the person, he speaks the same language as what I speak. And I'd like to invite him to actually come and talk uh, on that night as well. Uh, Mr. Pillay, who's the high performance coach of the SA Schools hockey team. And um, I think he would add value to an evening like that next week. So I'm definitely going to invite him out here to uh, come and see if he can share some of his knowledge because he's got some vast experience as well. So that's basically me. The last slide is just something that I found, and don't shoot me, but it's just something I want to share with you. Alright, it's just a 21 rolls. 21 rolls to be a great player, sporting parent. <laughs> uh, it's a bit small. I'll send you this, the photo, I'll send it to one of the moms and they can share it with you guys. But it, uh, it's something that, is, for an interesting fact, Super Sports Schools is running a parent coaching campaign this month, I think. Because somehow they've started doing, a, I follow their social media pages, and they started doing a lot more of this kind of engagement where they're looking at the role of parents as role models in the, in the kids' sporting uh, environment. Because it's not just something that's, that might be happening in the southern South schools. I mean, I've seen posts from schools as far as Durban, Glenwood, giving out a spe uh, spectator code of conduct, which the parents now have to sign in every year to. So it's happening as far north as Durban. Uh, I've seen incidents on Facebook this past weekend where the, or the festivals that happen in the holidays where people were, uh, you know, saying, guys, but sports not becoming lucky anymore. We, we can't enjoy coaching if there's all this uh, bickering on the side of the field. The coaches are just, you know what, I'm giving up. I've seen some of our community schools here also in the, addressing the same issue. So I'm trying to be proactive. Uh, I'll share this with you. The three things we are standard is show interest in what your child does. I think you all do. That's why you're here tonight. Uh, don't become over-involved. I haven't had any of that yet. So... I've already started coaching now, but don't come over involved and uh, show some respect for our coaches and our position and officials. On a match day, the guy blowing is a teacher um, or he's an assistant at the school or he's an intern. He knows as much about rugby as you do. Let's respect the official. If a bad call's made, you know what? A bad call's made. I think I, I reprimanded one of my age group uh, uh, cricket player coaches uh, last term where he, said that he told the team that they lost because of the umpire. And I said, that's not on. We don't encourage that kind of dialogue. Right? The umpire has the final say. If he says, you know what, it's out, or it's a four, or it's a six, that's his decision. We respect it, we get on the game, 
and we've you know tried to fool. No, it's bizarre for the following reason. In the history, the hundred and what are we almost a hundred and eight years of the history of the school, there has never been a dedicated hockey field. And that is the biggest hurdle we face. And that is getting Astro time. Uh, our under 12s and under 13s have to bus to Hockey Valley every week to practice. You know, um, and to spend 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back for an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half on the field, it seems completely disproportionate. But that is the situation we're in. Fortunately, the under 9s, under 10s, and under 11s trot down the road during their phys ed sessions and, and we pop down to Herschel. It's close enough for us to. But, you know, and, and, and uh, I'm going to put this one straight out there right away. People come to us and say, but you know, you've got one hockey practice a week. So with one hockey practice a week, without a field, you've got work to do. Okay? Thanks for having So, you know, that's, that's the context we work in, yet our system works. And I think it's important to understand and to hear that right up front, our system works. And the reason it works um, is the following. Um, there's a journey. And if we have to look at it, um, the South African Hockey, um, the South African Hockey Association subscribes to international hockey structures. So we play age appropriate levels of, of hockey. So we start, and, and it's sort of internationally recognized that. Most sort of competitive hockey, yes, you can go to the Netherlands and you can find 60 year olds playing the six a side game. You know, it's, it's kind of their national sport in many ways. Um, but they start with six a side, quarter field, no goalkeepers, positional play, yes, their structures and their positions. Players rotate, players play in more than one position. It's not that from day one you're a defender, and that's it, you're a defender for the rest of your life. Obviously then we move up, so, so your boys will, will be learning the game this year. And I think that's also an important point, you know, they, they're beginners. And, and what do we expect of beginners? We, we expect them to be learning. We expect them to make mistakes, to fumble. Um, you know, Robin mentioned uh, Ryan Pillay, who we had in yesterday, doing a workshop with our coaching staff. And he makes such a good point, and it's something, I mean, I've been coaching since since I was in matric in 1988, I was coaching junior teams at, at my high school when I was in, in playing in, in matric. So I've been coaching since then. And it's something that has never dawned on me before. And yet he said it, and it's so obvious when he said it. The hockey stick is an awkward thing. You know, and when you think about some of these little guys running around the field, you know, even, you know, catching and Passing a ball is a challenge. That's, you know, and, and we kind of take catching and throwing a ball. It's sort of, everybody can do that. Throw a hockey stick into the mix. And it makes it hell of a complicated and awkward. So it's, it's one of those things they have to learn. We have to start somewhere. So we, we very much, you know, we look at this as a progressive thing. We start with real basic stuff. And I think it's important also to, you know, to realize that there's certain basics that we'll start with, obviously passing, stopping the ball, being able to get it, give it off to another player. If you can't do that, you can't play the game. You know, so we've got to start with some basics, we've got to work it out, we've got to build it up. And we have a very structured program here at Webpups, which reaps rewards. Um, we have players that have gone on, you know, over the years, we've had players who represent the country. Um, whether it be at high school level, whether it be you know, in age group structures, whether they're going to play provincial hockey, they're going to play national hockey. Um, currently, Alex Stewart is an old boy of our school who's in the men's national squad. Um, so, you know, we, we have successful hockey players um, produced through our system. But it's very much age appropriate. We focus, we've got, um, particularly in, in our structure, we've got Every age group, and, and even within the age groups, once we start getting further down the line, we start focusing on, you know, obviously A teams, we expect them to be sort of more skillful and more advanced, so we push the boundaries with certain teams um, as they move up in terms of what we expect them to do. And you'll see there, clearly, I divide it into two 
two types of skills. There are the individual skills, which obviously an individual needs to master to be able to play the game, but there are team skills. And team skills to me are probably more important than the individual skills. I'm not going to, even though I'm coaching the under 13A side, I'm not going to be coaching players and showing them, you know, and spending hours and hours of my practice time getting them to do all sorts of fancy aerial skills so they can flip the ball and they can juggle it while they're running and that sort of thing. We might do those as fun little exercises, but those are not skills I'm teaching them. Those are skills they master on their own. Okay? Um, I have a son who's playing, he's, he's in his matric year, he's playing first team hockey at school. He's, it's his second season of first team hockey. He played first team men's hockey last year. Um, and I've yet to see him on the field juggling a ball. But at home, you pick up the hockey stick and you pick up the ball, and he's got skills that I've never had in my life before. Um, phenomenal skills. And it's, but in terms of, that's something he's done on his own and developed. Not through a single hockey practice at school or at his club was he taught, you know, to be all fancy and come up with all this trickery. And a lot of, as Mr. Damon said, a lot of young players and junior players starting out, they see things happening and they, they do these, you know, they perfect these little skills at home and whatever else, but they don't know how to use them. They don't know when they're appropriate to use. In fact, I was watching a game with my wife last night where my son was playing um, and he pulled off a skill and she said, I didn't even know you could do that. And I said, yes, but he doesn't use it because he knows when he can use it and he can't. He's reached that level. So, in terms of our system, it's age-appropriate skills so that they can play the game. I think that's the most important thing, that they're able to play the game. So at under nine, it's just going to be basic. We're not going to be teaching them to do all sorts of fancy things. Um, because they've got to be able to play the game first. And then those other skills will come with time. Um, so, our practices. We have one practice a week. Yes, one practice a week. Um, the matches, when we get to... Uh, I, and I've said to you, I've explained this to why. Essentially, people say to us, but why can't we use the Herschel Field? You know, why can't we get another, get an afternoon on it? I don't, I don't know if, if people really understand the demand on AstroTurf in any place. Herschel have an astro, it's shared by two schools, because we have to understand that there's the prep school and the senior school. Springfield have the same situation. Springfield have said to us, yeah, you can use our astro while we're not using it. So you can have it from 6 o'clock every day in the evening. And I'm going, you don't have lights. Hockey's going to sport by 6 o'clock, it's getting dark. That's why they don't use it beyond 6 o'clock. You know, so even if we look at the turfs available in the neighbourhood um, and try and get onto them, it's, it's a near impossibility. Um, we're playing Weinberg with the, the teams from under 10 up to under 13 next week. And Weinberg, with two turfs, struggling to fit all, up, all the matches onto two turfs in the afternoon. Because the prep school's got it for so much time, and then the high school's. And they've got the boys and the girls. You know, four schools using two turfs. So the demand for Astro is just something that, unless we have our own, we, we have to do the best we can. So we make the most of the time that we do have. Um, our Wednesday matches, uh, we're in a slightly different system to, to with the under nines to, to what the under tens through to under thirteens experience, and that's over the years. Um, yeah, and there, there are some questions out there about it, but and even I have my own questions about it. The boys' schools were traditionally much stronger than most of the other schools on the, on the in the southern suburbs in terms of the hockey, and they felt uh, before my time here they felt that uh, when the boys' schools got together that the, there was greater value in the boys playing strength versus strength. Okay, in terms of the learning process, so we start a, a sort of like boys' school. Round Robin was started at uh, using the turfs at Hartleyvale every Wednesday afternoon where they play multiple games in one afternoon. So every, off, every Wednesday they'll play against Saks, Bishops and Bosch. And, you know, and 
So it's, you know, it is against uh, some of the strong schools. We've now in a situation where other schools have developed their hockey, they've got facilities, etc. Um, and we see that Sweet Valley is a co-ed school with a similar number of boys as us. is very, very competitive. Um, very good hockey school. And we're seeing more and more of those other schools as they've gained their own facilities, they're upping their level. Um, but be that as it may, we're, we're in the situation where we play with those boys' schools every week. And those, very much for the first half of the season, are used as coaching opportunities. That's where they learn to play the So they learn, and the coaches of both teams give advice to the boys in the field. To both teams. You know, so I, as a wet pups umpire and coach, I'm guiding the boys and saying, okay, right, I'll take it, look for the pass over there, or whatever. Careful of your tackle, keep your stick on the ground, rather, whatever, you know, and whether it's, whether it's a wine bed boy I'm talking to, or a Rondebosch boy, or a wet pups boy, that's the nature of how it's played at that level. Um, so it's very much a learn through experience process, um, those Wednesday games. And from that point of view, we also, we don't stream the boys, um, certainly not for the first term of hockey. It's to try and let everybody find their feet and let the dust settle. And by the time we reach the third term, then we will start to look at developing teams you know, of greater strength and whatever else. And still then we'll take two teams that are stronger teams and two teams that are slightly weaker or whatever. We try not to box people too early in terms of who's going to be A, B, and C. You know, that comes with time. There's plenty of time for that to happen. So that's pretty much how we approach it. Just um, on my last point here, in terms of our hockey here at Red Pups, obviously I'm the head of hockey. Um, my coaching, I, in my time here at Red Pups over the last uh, 10 years, I've been involved with coaching under 11s, under 12s, the, the, the under 13s. So I've been up and down all over the place. Um, and uh, we've got, this year we've got um, Chelsea Lassen, who's come in as a sports assistant and particularly who will focus on hockey. She brings a, a, lot, of, a lot of knowledge and skill um, into our department in terms of hockey. Um, she's very, very involved in her club. She plays at Conberg in, down here in the southern suburbs, where she's overseeing the entire junior program, <coughs> coaching program, and so that's up to under 13 um, level. Um, and then the remainder of our coaching staff, oh, so Caroline Lunn um, from our uh, foundation phase, she, from the pre-prep, she is going to be the manager for the age groups, sort of looking after the admin and that. Um, Chelsea will be very involved with coaching at practices. Um, she is also coaching at the under 12 level, so that match day clashes, but she will be very much involved with managing and ensuring that our hockey program is uh, delivered properly down at the, at the bottom end. Um, Ms. Nikita Brooks has uh, run our under nine program before she coordinated it last year, so she's also going to be involved there um, with some of our student staff, um, Kirsten Orensa, Anastasia. Cameron Chadwick is a wonderful asset to our school. He's an old boy. Um, he's a young old boy. We've got a lot of young old boys who come back to wet pups, and actually, I think that is partly what contributes to the success of our hockey. In that, these old boys that come back are so passionate about their hockey, and they're so passionate about the hockey they experienced here at wet pups that they want to have kids that they're looking after have the same experience. And Cameron is actually, um, as I say, he's a young old boy. He's two years out of high school. Um, he is currently one of the um, Western Province indoor goalkeepers, so he's our goalkeeper specialist as well, but he works with the under nines. He loves working with the guys. He coaches extensively outside of school in private PSI structures and all sorts of things as well. Um, and he just loves wet pups and he loves hockey, you know, and to me that is just a, a recipe for success. Um, and then Ms. Daniels, a new external coach we've got um, as well. So we've got, we are we almost overstaffed with our under nines in terms of how we, the number of staff. As Robin suggested, we also, while um, on any given day at a match, the boys will be allocated to a coach for that, for that match situation, they'll know their coach. At practices, they're rotating through different skill stations, through the different, under the guidance of the different 
coaches, are getting input from various play, um, coaches as well, which is important for them. And, yeah, and that, that's the beginning of the journey. And, and from there we take it forward, we develop things through to through the under 10 and, and up to the under 13. And as I said, we're very proud of our hockey tradition here at Whip Pups, despite the hurdles. <laughs> Sports we had a year of not doing much, um, but we like it. And I see it at the senior level as well, at, the, at the high school level, where I can see schools that, are, that have been on top of their game and are struggling. And other schools have come up and are suddenly matching them. And uh, it could be that the boys that have missed out on two years of, of, of serious, serious work. So we put a lot of resources in. I mean, he's got a great, great coaching team there. Ms. Daniels is also a SAHA, eh? level one coach. I think Ms. Lassen as well, Karen Chad is a level zero, zero coach. The uh, Brooks is level one. So that's that's great uh, testament over there. Uh, on the rugby side, they all clueless. Does it play for fast play? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, uh, we've got some great experience as well. They're boys that have, 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 have played provincial rugby. They, they are here working with our kids. Um, I'm hopefully qualified enough. Uh, I'd like to go and, and do my level three soon. So uh, I think I'm qualified enough in terms of coaching and the experience that I have. But yeah, if you guys want to share anything, please. I. It's almost to your pass. I said I want to hear your pass. I will maybe take, let's say, three questions if there is. If there's not, it has been a very successful evening. We go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can. There's two questions. We got one left after that. So the first one you're mentioning, uh, Ryan Pillar earlier, yes, in performance academy, and might be seeing you next week. Are you going to bring any potentially coaching structures, or is academy within the board of school? That's the first question. And then probably the second, the word question is the capacity issue with Astro. And the shortage of that is there a realistic long term plan around getting a facility like that? That's a very, I think you commented on the number, which is a hideous number. I want to look to my right, but obviously, a lot, a lot of the private schools have had their facility for five, six, yeah, eight yeah. years. Well, is there a plan for something like that? Because it doesn't sound like it's going to get any easier with. Yeah, look, it's, 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 not, it's not going to get any, any easier, and space is our biggest issue. That, that's, that's the thing. So, you know, if we had to look at it, um, you know, a, a good number of years ago, when, when the Getty Center was, was built, um, the, uh, the intention was to realign it and create a more usable space. Uh, there was a plan to potentially make that field across the road um, into an Astra. Um, for various reasons, there was, there was potentially funding available, but then the potential funding dried up. So, you know, it, it is. It does come down to to a funding a funding issue as well. This space. Um, you know, we can't fit a, fit a full field in there. If we could fit a three quarter field in there, it would be amazing. Um, but you know, we can't even look at at, at footing, if putting in a full field. Um, we just don't have the space. You know, unless we're going to go and put it out here, yeah, I mean, it would be the, the best astro in town, the best view. Quite seriously, yeah. COVID yep. um, we were looking to the man next to the Bosley music, music School. school. The yeah. music school um, trying to actually use their land, but we put the Astro down and we share it with a little secondary big school and we share the facility. So we looked at that very yep. seriously before lockdown. We were going to go yeah. 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 So, so that's what we looked at, and uh, we've gone quite far along. And she measured up how the extra would look and where it would look, and uh, we started to actually talk to people there, and it was fucked up. So it's, it's one of those things that needs to be revived. But, I mean, uh, you know, I'll be straight up honest with you. Um, I mean, Sweet Valley, I think they are the, the ones who have had the most recent pitch that they've developed down on the, on the Berkeley Sports Club grounds and that when they opened it, I think it was three years ago, three or four years ago, no, three years ago, yeah, just before COVID hit, um, that was nine million. You know? So it's not, you know, we're not talking small change, you know, it's, it's a serious, serious undertaking to do it yourself.
Um, Can I just say something? Yeah. Uh, I've got a girl at birth, there's no astro there. And I uh, always thought she was getting disadvantaged. But she went to Western Province Trials this weekend, and the Herschel girls are there with their private coaches and their astro. And the Grove girls had a good jobs against them. So I think it's the parents that get inconvenienced because the drive to Hartleyvale is not. The, the drive to Hartleyvale, we, we, we bust. I mean, look, for, for the practices, we bust. Mm. So, so, so it's an inconvenient yeah. for the parents, but I think for the kids, they learn, that they learn enough. Yeah, I think, uh, just before that, I think on, on that, uh, I, I mean, I, I would put my limb out there and say, I, I, would, I would potentially look at maybe a, a costly model. I have the, the what I spend on buses and what we spend on, on, on Astro Hire for the year. <laughs> work some here, work some figures out and see where we're at, because in 10 years' time, what we have spent to go there, we could have had paid Astro off. So, I would pose that one day, whoever's here in charge is leading us, and maybe they can take us in that direction. Um, you know, my uh, boss man over there, he's, he's not going to be around with me, he will support my vision and dreams over here. So. <laughs> but he can maybe sign up before he leaves. But, uh, so that is something that we'll, that we'll uh, that's something that, we, that we're definitely looking at. As, a, as an independent voice private school, I think it's, like you said, he has been talked about it. The other question you had about Mr. Pillay, yeah. um, he's not particularly involved in our coaching structures here. We've got committed, dedicated staff doing the coaching. However, I believe in upskilling our staff all the time. And it's something that, I, that, I, that I've driven when I got here is that my coaches need to be certain level qualified or have done a certain workshop or two to coach a sport. You can't just come in off the back coach. So I would like to invite him to come and do another coaching seminar. Maybe do more interactions, like I said, with the parent, even next week he, sh he says some great thoughts. Maybe I have him talking to the parents as well. You get a perspective of a high-performance coach. The other panelists are all performers, uh, Springboks uh, or national players. They're also high-performance coaches in their respective fields. Uh, so get an understanding from him as well, but he'll definitely be involved in upskilling our, our staff. Uh, maybe on an on-day basis every term or so. Yeah, look, we've, we have asked him for, for sort of further inputs in terms of our own plan and program in that, so he is at the moment having a look at that, but I mean, just just in passing comments, you know, he said in our workshop yesterday, he said, you know, he wished, he wished he had seen this kind of thing at many of the other schools where he's done work before. So, you know, we, we do have a pretty good system in place, and obviously we, we always look to, we're not, we're not just going to sit back and, and say we're the best, we certainly not. But we, you know, so we have asked him for further input in terms of where can we, where can we look at things differently? Is, are there things we're missing that we need to add, etc. So, right. so we're yes. looking for that input. Two more questions, and then I think we can have some coffee. And if you want to chat out, you can. It's over there, Mr. Reed. Eh? Yeah. So my question is more about the logistics of everything. Yeah. From a communication point of view, I think the parents are a lot more relaxed when we know what's happening. Cool. There was a lot of anxiety today about the school app and the live app not being updated and you know, we have to you know, follow the yeah. schedule. So I believe there is a plan for um, the sports coaches to communicate directly with a parent in each grade or something about any changes that happen to the sports calendar. What is the plan with regards to to all of that. So, so from, a, from a logistics point of view on, on the back end, so we've decided to, the, anything that's routine, we've taken off the live app. A sport practice is routine, it's going to happen unless a message gets sent out. There's a thunderstorm, no practice afternoon it's cancelled. So that's been taken off, but the matches and any events or fixtures will still be on the app. The Aki will upload the fixtures um, by on, okay, but on the live page, it was required to update it. So the Aki will update it there. If you go into the app, under sport, each sport has its own tab. You click on a particular sport, they have a fixture sheet, they have a team sheet, and they have all the rest of the information there. You just need to click on it, find your age group, and it will be there. It's updated after the last practice prior to a match. Now, in some cases, that might be a bit late. We'll try and update the, the fixtures the week prior, so that next week's fixtures are on. You can see where the age group is playing, and the tennis playing at Weinberg Cool. This is the times, more or less. Uh, he's joining an A, B, or C team. We don't know yet. The coach hasn't had, a last, hasn't had his final practice yet. After the final practice, he can come and say, Mommy, I'm on the A team. 
it's that coach's responsibility to update that team sheet that evening so that the parents know and they put any other side note there. I mean, I've done that with my cricket boys this year where I put a side note on the team sheet so you know what some the rangers are. I would also, so I do it, I'd also say I'd like to encourage my other coaches is to maybe have a little contact group with two or three parents in a different, a, in a different team. So that when you do share something, it gets sent from that parent to whoever. So that, you know, that, that, that that's a streamlined form of communication. I, I would encourage that. I wouldn't say that they, they must do it. Um, I know sometimes I get, I don't mind, I get bombarded with like messages on a Sunday afternoon or a lunchtime or I mean, I see my son very often or not very often, very little and that time that I have, I want to spend with him and I, I've got to reply to certain things. So, but I do do it. But, so, don't stop sending, please do. And I'll talk to my other coach and see if they can do the same thing and just, Send out a logistics note. Um, but yeah, we are trying matches, to solve. Matches and those type of things will be on the, on the on. calendar. Yeah. But the, the practices we assume will always go ahead unless we are communicated. Always go ahead unless communicated. And if there's no match, there's no practice. For so both sports. For, all, for, uh, for hockey. Oh. So if there's no hockey match this no. Thursday for the age group, they're not going to have a practice in that place because we don't have an Astro. That match would have taken place at a, a different venue. Then they. So then, so then they'll go. But there is a particular practice arranged, so you will know beforehand. Look, I mean, we will get sent yeah. out there under night. Nice.